Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode. Um, in this video I'm going to have a look at this thing here. Now I've just been watching a uh, video by a friend of mine, Clint. Um, he took apart a Bourne's rotary encoder. Uh, now these use an optical quadrature encoder system and um, it's used for um, controls and things like that. So uh, now this um, is actually using quite a similar technology. Um, it's a rotary encoder so um, although this isn't actually used for um, sort of adjusting knobs and things on a panel, um, this is actually used on the end of a motor to sense the position and rotational speed and anything you need off the back of a motor. Um, so you might want to use that for things like um, speed control, uh, feedback or being able to position um, a motor very precisely, that kind of thing. Um, so this came from, um, I believe, it came from the Kodak CR500 that I took apart a while ago. Um, this I think was on the main drive motor to obviously provide the position um, and feedback of the actual motor that took the um, x-ray um, plates through the machine. So I took this off, saved it and I've, uh, I was just having a, a bit of a sort out and I found it in a pile of stuff and I thought oh, it'd be interesting to uh, actually have a look inside this and uh, see how similar it is to um, a sort of a normal rotary encoder. So as I said, uh, this was meant to be mounted on the end of a motor and uh, this uh, piece of stainless steel um, actually allows the mounting and adjustment on, onto the end of a motor. So you can actually install it and then adjust its position accurately like that and then secure it into place. The motor spindle runs through this center hole and is secured by a couple of um, small Allen uh, sorry, grub screws, um, and then that secures onto the end of the motor with the shaft going through um, the sensor in the middle. Um, this is a uh, Renko Encoders Inc. encoder. Um, I believe that's a fairly well respected make. Um, they don't look to be particularly cheap, these. Uh, I've had a look around, and although I can't quite find the exact model, the exact same model as this. Um, they do seem to uh, demand a quite high price, probably circa $500, something like that for one of these. So interesting bit of tech, uh, not cheap at all. Uh, but yeah, we'll sacrifice this one in the name of science. Uh, model number on this is 79992-054. Uh, I can't really find any information on the exact specification of this, but they came in a range of um, different options. Um, obviously the number of um, pulses you get per revolution of the actual encoder changes how accurate it is. Um, obviously if you've got one with only um, 100 points all the way around then um, it's not going to be that accurate but I believe these can go up to around 10,000 so uh, it's quite, um, quite impressive really. Uh, they also have other outputs as well for uh, an index pulse and and I think they have a quadrature, um, so they have quadrant quadrants that you, um, there are pulses per quadrant, so I think you can uh, sort of find out where the index and each of the 90 degree points are as well, I think. Um, the connection is uh, lots of wires. We've got nine, um, nine pin D connector here, and every single pin is connected to something. So um, obviously there's going to be uh, probably power, ground, and then all the signals coming back out. Um, so that would then just plug into your whatever you're using to sense it. It's not um, RS-232 or anything, um, but I believe that the connections are differential. Uh, so that probably explains why there's so many, um, there's so many wires on it. Right, uh, let's open this up. Um, we, let's first take off this metal mounting bracket okay not much to see underneath there uh, there's a date code in the casting uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 uh, and then 04 in the center so that will be August 2004 that the uh, casting was made or well, the mould for the casting was made. Not really much else on there. Um, take off this plastic cover. Uh, 
Okay, so we've got a circuit board in the top connection out to the that just goes out to the wire. Uh, we've got a big input capacitor there, diode, and a couple of devices up here. Those are a bit hard to read. Okay, this is an AM twenty six LS thirty one C, which is a quadruple differential line driver. Um, it's hardly surprising given that uh, we already know that this uses differential signaling, and this device is an on semiconductor LM two nine zero one D, and that is a. What was that? Um, quad voltage comparator. Okay, we've got a plastic thing there, which does actually look like it's soldered to the board. So to see if that comes out, I can see a a disc of some sort on the inside. And that's about all I can see at the moment. So yeah, that is attached to that, so I will just have to desolder that. Okay, let's see what we have under here. Wow. Um, okay, it looks like a glass uh, disc with all of the with the silvered coating. Obviously, that is um, going to be a um, sort of a line. A, a grating pattern um, which is actually on the the glass has obviously been silvered um, to create a, a path through and a, a reflective path can't even see there's some uh, larger index marks on the inside and the outer one which is probably the most fine one um, I just can't see at all um, there's the lines are just so small it's just gray so I'll have to have uh, unfortunately I don't have a microscope to look at that properly but uh, we'll see if we can get a closer look at that um, on the underside of here we have a number of optical devices on there there you go hopefully you can see that a little bit better um, so if we take a look at a closer look at uh, this disc, you can see just in here there is um, a number of uh, points where, as this is rotated, it uh, brings the reflective coating on the glass disc over a small hole, which will presumably either reflect back um, to the sensors or not reflect back. And we have a, another view of it. A bit there. Um, it looks like there's six um, tracks on that section. And I will try and get a a view of the actual finest position, but it's really, really hard to get a reflection so you can actually see what's actually going on. Hold on a second. Hopefully, if I can get the lights reflected off this right. You should be able to see four points um, in the grey area. And as I slowly rotate this round, you can see each of the four points reflects back in sequence. So that's providing the fine position. I'm turning that an incredibly small amount. So the resolution on that is um, absolutely incredible. So from that you can see how uh, which way it's turning, and of course the actual number of uh, you can count the number of 
pulses and uh, from that you can calculate the exact position of the motor that's attached to it. Absolutely amazing, that's so small. I don't think I've got anything which is going to be able to um, magnify the the grating that's going to be on on this glass disc, but it's incredibly small. So underneath the main disc there is a uh, another glass uh, another piece of glass here, um, just there. So that's going to have the same um, grating on it, but slightly offset. So each one, each of those four little squares um, either um, lets the light through or blocks it, depending on the position of the uh, the grating that's on the on the actual wheel that turns. So I can't really see how this comes apart any further. Um, there's a couple of grub screws there, I'll take those out. Um, I can't seem to get this out. I'm guessing that, given that there's only two connections on this, that this is probably the light source and these are the sensors, I think. So it's not, um, it doesn't shine, the light doesn't come off this and then reflect back. It actually is um, lit from underneath, actually. So slightly correcting myself there. Um, so let's just take out these. Um, so let's just take out these grub screws here and see whether we can actually get the glass wheel off. I think that is actually pressed into there. So I'm probably going to struggle to get that out. I'm just going to try uh, tapping this out here. Maybe it'll just slowly push out. Yeah, I tried to tap that out, but it's not budging at all. So I don't think we can get really go much further, but uh, um, really, really interesting to see even at this level. So looking at the position of these uh, these sensors on here, they don't um, come down far enough to see these inner tracks here. So um, I think that must be, as I said, on a different, uh, different model. Um, so this really only has the quadrature encoder um, and an index pulse, so yeah, I don't think it uses these inner these inner indexes. Well, I hope you found that one interesting. Uh, looking inside this high precision rotary encoder. Uh, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up and all that good good stuff. And um, thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next video. Bye for now.